Hello, everybody. This is Josh. This is Tut. Hello. Uh, this is Anyone this is Luke. <laughs> I didn't you guys know. Want to redo that or something? Like <laughs> introductions. No, it it's Earth Eagle GT. We'll and Off go. the cuff, uncut. All right, all right. I was like, because you guys just like, <laughs> you just said, like no one would say anything. I'm like. Uh, I mean, I thought Antron was gonna go. I thought we were like going down the list or something. I didn't know what order it was. So I was just gonna wait to go to the last. So exactly, yeah. it's, oh, it's a confusing process. Discussion. All right, so we have a few things to talk about today. Uh, welcome to episode three of Flex and Chill, uh, which is the movie podcast here at Hybrid Network. Uh, last episode did pretty great. We talked about Ghostbusters, and we talked about uh, Thor three Ragnarok. So that was the. Uh, Two big things of discussion there. This episode, we will be talking about uh, the new Beauty and the Beast teaser that came out, the Power Rangers set photos that I guess you could say kind of leaked online, technically, and the whole uh, James Bond, Daniel Craig no more kind of thing that's going on right now. So if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description for SoundCloud so you can, watch the, so you can listen, I should say, to the whole podcast. Uh, if not, you'll just have a very brief snippet under 15 minutes here on YouTube. So without further ado... Let's get into it. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, guys. So I haven't seen this movie in years. And the funny thing is before I saw this teaser, which I, I think I saw the teaser like either earlier today or late yesterday, I had no idea they were making this. So I was really surprised, <laughs> actually. I was like, because, you know, on YouTube they have like, you know, the hot, I guess, videos. Like yeah. videos that are like Trending. they are trying to push for you to watch. And I see Beauty and the Beast and I'm like, Beauty and the Beast, like, they're making a new one? Like, what? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm pretty excited, though. Emma Watson's Bella, or Belle, uh, Dan Stevens, who I'm not too familiar with. He's playing the Beast. Luke Evans is Gaston. Emma Thompson, Mrs. Potts. Ewan McGregor, a.k.a. Obi-Wan, is uh, Lumiere. 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 Um, and we just keep, Ian McKellen is Cogsworth. I mean, we just keep going on and on. It, it has a good cool. cast, basically, is my point. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm really excited because this is Disney uh, making this. <laughs> and considering how Jungle Book did, and I guess Cinderella also, they seem to be on a, a good streak with remaking their own animated movies. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your guys' thoughts? I've been keeping up with it since for like months now. I honestly saw the trailer last week, and I'm pretty excited. It looks awesome. I'm just, I just, I just can't wait to see how Beast is gonna look. That's the one thing I'm curious about. You know they're gonna tease it. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, they're not gonna like throw everything out there, even though of course it's it's a remake of the classic tale. But yeah, I can't wait to see it. I wonder how that scene ever gonna have Beast fighting the wolves is gonna be too. Yeah, They'll, uh, I think it'll be fine because as we saw. They can do animals really fucking well, so it'll probably be amazing, McKinley. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Still, just curious how it's gonna look. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, I'm same with McKinley. Like, I think what's m the most iconic thing about is the the character designs of Beauty and the Beast. And if they mess those up, because you know, like these past few films have been coming out this year that've been messing up, like from Doomsday, the Ninja Turtles. Like their designs, a lot of people have kind of been. You know, not very feeling the vibe of that. So I think it, that's really much going to make it or break it for myself. Just like how the characters look. Another right, good question. Right. Can they, I wonder how pulling off the, you know, the wardrobe and like the like cogs or like the, the inanimate objects as characters, how that's going to work too. Because yeah, we've seen them do animals, but objects like that we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't seen. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Like a candle, yeah. like that's going to be. Yeah, and a little teacup. I wonder how they're gonna do that. Yeah, because like they look cool as cartoons, but I mean, like if in live action, it's gonna look weird if you have like a realistic beast and like you literally have big cartoon eyes on these mm -hmm. inanimate objects. So, I mean, I don't I'm comical. I'm really excited because I just looked it up really quick while you guys were talking, and they're primarily filming at Shepperton Studio, and mm -hmm. I just quickly looked at you know past movies they've made uh, for like Disney products. And we have things like Captain America, the first Avenger, John Carter, Thor, the Dark World, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, Alice Through the Looking Glass, and Doctor Strange. Um, and they also did the Star Wars movies, uh, Episode 3, they did uh, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire, Batman Begins, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter. Uh, they've done a, basically a lot of movies uh, with really good effects, that's my point being. 
Uh, they've done more than that, obviously, than what I just said. But I was just trying to highlight Disney movies and then movies that I know have good effects in them. And, yeah, I, I'm excited, guys. I am, like, the more I'm reading about it, I'm really excited. And I feel bad. I totally let this be under my radar <laughs> this whole time. So what you're yeah. saying is if they had a resume for Shepperton, it would be off the charts. Oh, my God. Yeah, this... <laughs> This has been this studio has been around since 1931. So I mean, they have a very yeah. long resume. Uh, I think I think the fact that it goes under the radar works better for me, just because the Jungle Book. I didn't really pay much attention to it. Like I, I was like, oh, it's, it'll be a remake, fine, whatever. And then I watched it, and it was pretty cool. So I think the less I know about this going into it, it's going to work out better for me. Um, I'm, I'm actually, if this practice works out, I'm not going to pay attention to any of the Disney live action things just so that when I see it, it's amazing. Because that trailer, you guys heard me before we started this, that that castle mm -hmm. looks fucking amazing. It looks beautiful. It, it, Spot on. Like immaculate, just huge freaking set. The ballroom looks fucking incredible. Like I was not expecting it to look that good. I don't know if that's a real set or if that's CGI. Disney proved to me they can basically recreate Earth with Jungle Book. So <laughs> either way, it looks amazing. I mean, I'm going to say this, and I know I'm saying this kind of late, so someone's probably already commented saying, like, I should give it a chance. I am going to give it a chance. Just like the Man of Steel suit, I wasn't a big fan of that at first. Just like the Amazing Spider-Man suit, I wasn't a big fan of that at first. But I waited to see the context of it uh, before, which, you know, I ended up liking the Man of Steel suit in that context because I understood, you know, its purpose and things like that. Uh, it wasn't the suit Martha Kent made. Uh, just like I understand, I understood the context of the Amazing Spider-Man one suit. I mean, he was just basically buying, like, spandex, you know, that skaters wear, bobslers wear, things like that. And, you know, he was doing his best to, you know, work with that. So I, I didn't hate it for that. But if the rumors are true that this is basically like an alien armor, so it's based off an alien design, things like that, I won't be mad. Because, I mean, it's alien. It's not supposed to look, you know, I guess, human. I, gu I guarantee Zordon's going to provide it for them. Yeah. What I'm curious is, what are they going to do with Zordon? I mean, I know this kind of deviates from the set photo, but do you think we're going to get, like, Big Head Zordon? Or are we getting, like, <laughs> and is Alpha? We better get Alpha. I'll be upset if we don't get Alpha. I bet, I bet hey. Zordon's going to be a hologram. Danger, danger, like rangers, rangers. Uh... Weedy. Yeah. <laughs> I just want a big fucking head talking to a bunch of kids. Like, that's all I really want. Cortana style. Not even that. I just want, like, a big green head talking to kids. Yeah, so the last thing uh, for the set photos, or I guess the last two things we could talk about uh, before we move on to our next subject is, so in the set photos, uh, I know we've talked about the suit a lot. Um, it looks like where the belly button is, it looks like his morpher, like, uh, like the morphicon thing is there. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. They uh, place it there. I would have thought they'd keep it like near the wrist, but I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I'm not. I mean, it's not a negative or a plus for me. I just thought it was interesting. It's like where the belly button is. Yeah, Tim uh, had Tim well, had yeah, the Tim best mentioned that earlier. Comment. <laughs> well, due, um, due to technicalities, that is technically your waist. I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. And then uh, the other thing is in the set photo of the Red Ranger. First off, he was alone, which was interesting. Uh, and then also he was fighting the uh, he was fighting a bunch of guys in green like outfits. So they're he's they're probably going to get CGI later. So what I'm thinking is these guys in the green suits are like the clay guys. Uh, I don't remember their exact name. But they're the clay guys. That was pretty much what they called them, the clay men. Yeah. Clay men. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm thinking this might be when his powers activate because he's not with his teammates. I mean... I guess so. That yeah, I bet they're I all know. by themselves, like one at a time. When like, like it's like one of the cliche, like they're like one shopping for groceries, the other ones at like football practice, and all of a sudden, like they start gaining <laughs> the, these powers. And it's the like... things that teenagers do. Yes. <laughs> all right. So our next topic is James Bond. So Daniel Craig reportedly is offered basically close to a hundred million dollars, um, and he said no. Take the money. <laughs> Take it. Uh, Not like he needs um, it, but, you know. No, like, I'm actually kind of glad about this. I don't know if I've ever said this before. I actually didn't really like Daniel Craig as Bond. 
I, I didn't I didn't mind him as Bond. I mean, I felt like he was very uninspiring, you know? Like, he wasn't really that charismatic. He was more just kind of like... It was like a I don't care kind of cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, was cool because he was much too good for this sort of job. He was just... He was above it. I don't know. Like, I just... I, I don't really know. I don't I'm know happy what it was he's about done, though. Because Spectre... Uh, Spectre was the last one, right? Yeah. Spectre... Yeah was a good conclusion for him. I mean, I hate when they give, like, the characters and the story a conclusion and then they just keep going for no reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy they gave him a conclusion, which every Bond can't say they had. That's true. I mean, so we as fans should be thankful for that. Uh, I really think they should take this opportunity to cast a younger Bond and actually put some effort into making the movies at a good amount of time. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> wasn't there, like, a six-year almost, like, gap? Between Quantum of Solace and uh, Skyfall? Yeah, it was pretty long. Yeah, that was, That's ridiculous. I mean, I almost <laughs> forgot about the James Bond movies as a whole. I think everyone I did. I completely forgot about yeah. them. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, you know, Daniel Craig kind of... I mean, like we just said a while ago, I mean, it's, it's nice that he was able to get a conclusion. Not every Bond can have that. So, with that being said, looking back at it, what's your guys' favorite Daniel Craig Bond film? I mean, I'm not talking... I know some people are really picky about it. They're like, well... Are we talking the most spy bondish film? Are we talking the most Bond film that's like the other ones? What are like what are we talking about? I mean, just in general, which one you like the most? I mean, I'll say it now. My favorite is probably Skyfall, especially the scenes when we go to China. I mean, it was just it was beautiful. To me, I thought it was beautiful. I thought the villain was great. The story was great. Everything about Skyfall. I mean, down to the soundtrack by Adele. I mean, the song was amazing. So I mean, that's my favorite, in my opinion. Right. So um, I'll let you guys go. Well, not Spectre, because Spectre was terrible. Um, Casino Royale is probably still my favorite. Um, I think, and again, I don't really even like him itself. It's just the actual story was kind of cool in that one. It was very, it was very, very reminiscent of the suave kind of cool man Bond. So I really did dig that one. Um, the other ones were too I, I haven't seen any of them. So. Wait, what? <laughs> I know I'm a favorite. I haven't seen any. So. How have you not seen any of them? I've never really been a James Bond fan. so. How did you know we were talking about Daniel Craig James Bond? <laughs> uh, you know we are talking about Daniel Craig James Bond this episode, and you didn't, was, you didn't wait, see I, any of the movies. Wait, am I supposed to, am I supposed to, am I supposed to catch movies. up on three films? Like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? I, I mean, there are four. Watch. Oh, are you not wiki the films in <laughs> 30 minutes? I mean, I know what they're about, but like, I haven't seen them, so I can't say which is my favorite. So. Oh, well, God. I'll just say Skyfall, because right. I feel like that should you be see, it. Have you seen any James Bond film? Yeah. Okay, there you go. That's fine. I've seen, I just haven't seen these, like the most recent ones. What is this? <laughs> we didn't get to who I want. <laughs> Wait, who would you oh. want, Luke? <laughs> I want. All right, here's my pitch. I want, <clears throat> I want Amelia <laughs> Clark as Bond, and I want, what? and I want Henry Cavill as the Bond boy. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag make Bond a, a girl. <laughs> there you go. We're starting a movement here. I'm getting, I'm getting on the movement now. Yes. I fully support. Yes. That's what I said. Well, if we're going, Actually, if we're no, going you know what? No, you know we should what? have a you know Bond what? girl and a female James Bond. I want Henry Cavill as James Bond, but yes, and Andrew Garfield as the Bond yes. boy. Yes. No, yes. no, make yes. Bond gay 2016. Keep Andrew Garfield out of James Bond. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Henry Cavill just pounding into Andrew Garfield. Oh, what? And then he dies, and we Holy replace scene. him with Ben Affleck as the other Bond boy. And then just like, he, no, <laughs> Ben Affleck is the Bond boy. There he you just... go. <laughs> no, Matt Damon's James Bond turned out Jason Bourne's British the whole time. <laughs> there you go. You know what? I really do want James, Jason Bourne and Bond to kind of reference each other as being in the same universe, kind of. And then, cool. that way, and then that way we could have a cool movie of James Bond going into a bar, seeing Jason Bourne, and they get to a hotel room together. Yeah, if they're making a 21 Jump Street Men in Black sequel crossover movie, then might as well, you know. 